Hey guys, what's up? If you're new, then welcome to the channel and please hit the subscribe button as it would immensely help us and let's get right into our video. If darkness were to be reincarnated in the form of a manga chapter, then this would be it. We kept theorizing about the red failing and the scabbard's dying and you might think that all this theorizing might soften the blow. But when the time came to read such a chapter where both hope and life is lost, it was pretty depressing. So let's talk about what happened. In the last chapter, we saw Luffy falling from the rooftop and instead of getting something like Momo or Yamato going to save Luffy, we get to see Luffy drop into the sea. Now to be honest, when I first saw this in chapter 10 and 13, I wasn't that agitated. But seeing him fall and drown actually hit hard. It was this dark and perfect symbolism of all hope disappearing. Later we find out the reason for Luffy's defeat. If you had read the 10-14 spoilers, then they were absolutely wrong. The reason for Luffy's defeat was not his haki running out, but Kaido simply being more resilient than Luffy and Luffy's inexperience in using advanced conqueror's haki. It seems that Luffy just went unconscious in the middle of an attack and his body couldn't keep up while Kaido was still standing up. So the reason why Luffy lost is quite clear, it's because Kaido is more skillful and resilient. While Luffy falls into the ocean, we see Kaido make an interesting comment on Luffy. It seems that you are unable to become Joy Boy either. Now Kaido knowing about Joy Boy was a genuine surprise for many of us. The only reason as to why he knows this must definitely be his past membership of the Rocks Pirates. But how did Rocks know about something that Roger learned at Laugh Tale when no one had gone for 800 years? That is something that remains to be answered. We also see Yamato on the third floor still heading for the roof, but we don't get to see her reaction to the announcement made by Bao Wang, so that's very unfortunate. And I hope that Yamato follows Kaido's trail, so at least someone can put up some resistance against him. Finally, Momonosuke has read Odin's journal, and he's found out about his important role in bringing the dawn to the world, and he realizes that he can't die here on Onigashima. Now when it comes to speculating what his role actually is, many people have theorized him to be Uranus, the ancient weapon, after seeing his control over Zunisha and everything that happened in the Zou arc. But personally, I think that's not the case. When we first see Pluton, the ancient weapon, it turns out to be a battleship. The second ancient weapon, Poseidon, turns out to be Shirahoshi, who's actually a mermaid who has the power to control sea kings. I think that the third ancient weapon will be completely different from Pluton and Poseidon just like Poseidon was completely different from Pluton and Momo's power to control giant animals like Zunisha is very similar to Poseidon so I think him being Uranus is not really the case. After reading the journal, Momo starts hearing voices. Now I still think that these voices have got something to do with Luffy falling into the ocean. It is quite possible that these voices might be sea kings coming to help Luffy as I don't see anyone else coming to his rescue. Later on, Kinemon comes to Momo's aid and Momo says that Kinemon, you have to tell this to everyone. I think it is quite possible that Momo just heard the Sea King say that they will take care of Luffy, so Momo is asking him to announce that Luffy will be fine, so don't worry about him and handle your own battles. It is very interesting to think what the Sea Kings might actually do to Luffy. Will they take Luffy to Wano's beach or will they take him away from Wano and away from danger to recover for some time? Now this seeking theory is just a lot of speculation so take it with a grain of salt but it's coming to my mind so I'm stating it. Non-Straw Hats and Straw Hats react in a completely different manner to Luffy's defeat. Marco appears to be in some sort of a disbelief. Law seems to be worried and Kid simply doesn't give a shit. All the Straw Hats seem to be concerned about Luffy, they are worried but they don't believe what's happened while Sanji and Zoro simply react to the surrender often given by Kaido by saying screw you. Now it's very hard to get information out of these reactions, so we'll just take them for what they are and not theorize further. Never have I hated a character so much that I feel like jumping into my screen and punching him in the face, and that character is Kanjuro. Kanjuro again transforms into Odin, disrespecting him and fooling Momo and Shinobu. But this time Kiku and Kinemo know his ways. Kiku swings a sword at Kanjuro, but her hands still tremble at seeing the image of the man who raised her and Izo, and she is stabbed by Kanjuro. I hate to say this, but I think our prediction in the 10-13 video was correct and Kiku just died. Finally, Kinemon is able to put an end to Kanjuro and yes, I think this is the last time we see him. But even after all that, the tragedy hasn't ended. 
Kaido drops by Momo and swings his Kanabo imbued with Conqueror's Haki. And Kinemon is seen blocking that monstrous attack with his upper body after his sword's break. Now it seems very unlikely for Kinemon to survive such a monstrous attack to his skull. He never got to meet his wife and everything but I think this is where it might end and his wife might never get to see him alive. All she will get to see is the dead body of a samurai who fought till his last breath for his lord. I do think that Inuarashi will also die joining Kiku, Ashura and probably Kinemon as his survival rates are very low. I think there's still more darkness to come before act 3 ends. I hope we get to see Yamato and Momo's reunion soon. And that's it for the review. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment and we'll see you in the next one.